K-pop music had a massive impact in the last few years and it's been doing amazing topping charts all over the world. But I have some news for you. K-pop is suddenly sounding like UK Garage. I would say a blend of UK Garage, drum and bass, and there is a girl band that's doing it really, really well. Their name is New Jeans and they have this new song, Super Shy, which is killing it. So is this gonna be the new sound of K-pop? It looks like it. So today we're gonna learn how to get this sound, remaking Super Shy, and this is gonna be our final result. Alright guys, Bad Habit here. I'm super excited about this video because I'm a huge, huge fan of UK Garage. I was making Garage beats back in 2020, 2021, and these are only some of the beats that I've done. But you know, when I was sending them around to managers, a &Rs, they all kept saying, Nah, this is not gonna work. Well, I guess I was right. Alright, so let's jump into this. So we're actually gonna start from the hook, and you'll see why in a second. In the intro, we have some drums, but they're filtered. So what I'm thinking is, let's try to get the drums right, starting from the hook, and then we're gonna go back to the intro and just filter these drums. So the drums are definitely garagey sounding, so I'm gonna start by looking for a kick and the snare. I'm going through some samples. It's not bad. Not sure that I like the kick, but the rim is really good. I like this, but I want to find a few more layers to make it a little bit more full and get closer to the original one. Yeah. So plus two, they're so much better together now. And one thing that you always see me do, I really like to shape the sounds and I'm using the envelopes to do that. So I'm gonna start by reducing a little bit the sustain of both of these, not a lot of tail. So I'm gonna reduce also the release. Slightly increase the attack on this one because I feel like it's hurting my ear. Same thing here. Okay. So I found this little loop which I find interesting because the tone of this snare is completely different than the ramps that we have chosen now. It's covering different frequencies and so I think they can blend really well together. Oh yeah, love it. So without it, oh, listen to the body that adds. This is enough for now and I wanna find a kick. I'm looking for a kick that doesn't have a lot of top end but that has a really solid body. A really good knock but not the punchy kick with a lot of top. Oh, this is really cool. I know it has a lot of top end but if we can control that, I really like the mids and the knock that this kick has. Interesting. And I think I like it better on oh, minus one. The sound selection is very good. I love this kick. Now I really need to have a little bit more saturation, a little bit more drive, you know, that's gonna help the kick to stand out in the mix. Yeah, a little bit of filtering. Okay, so I'm about to share one of my biggest secrets for kick drums. In this case, I really feel the need to have a little bit more bottom end. And uh, sometimes I don't wanna do it just with an EQ and do something like that, just boost the low end, which I mean, that's fine, but that's not how I wanna do it today. I have a different way of doing this, which I really, really love because it doesn't really change the character of the kick, but it still adds a lot of low end. We're gonna load this and I'm gonna put it right here on the kick. This is basically taking a frequency, which is the frequency that is showed here. In this case, it's 220. 29 hertz and it's gonna shift that frequency down by the amount that we say right here so by 50 cents let's start from this and let's see how it sounds and the more you go low with the threshold the more you're gonna notice it okay oh my goodness did you hear that with without it what? Just listen how the kick now is really full of low end. What is this? What is this? Unbelievable, unbelievable. Every time that I use this trick, I get excited because this is a really, really great way of, you know, making your kick a little bit more full without changing the full character of it. Now I wanna move on to one of the elements that really stands out in the drums, and these are percussions. There's a lot going on in this song. It's like a lot of like tambourines and some hats. This is cool, this is cool. Oh, this is nice, even better maybe. So you know how much I like to just play and then capture afterwards because this way I don't feel like the pressure of being recording and having to do it right. I just keep playing until I feel that I have something that feels good and then at that point I just stop and capture it. In this case I want it to be quantized because I feel that in this beat there's so much going on especially on the drums and I want all the layers to be really consistent with each other. Pitch it up a little bit. Yeah. 
that's what I mean. Now I'm looking for a layer for this tambourine, something that feels a little more real, live feeling. This is really cool. Make it a little bit tighter by doing this. Yeah, but you've probably noticed that this pattern is not exactly the same as the one that we just played right here, right? And I want this to match that one. So how can we achieve this? I actually have an idea for doing this. I'm gonna put a gate right here and sidechain this tambourine to the one that we played right before. Can you hear it? Basically the gate is acting whenever there's nothing here. For example, here, it's not playing. The tambourine is playing here, but not here. It's like we cut this but it's happening in the more natural way. I could do this. The thing is that I'm not sure I will get a better result by doing this because we can set the gate in a way that it's a little bit more natural sounding. I think this is a good sweet spot, sounding pretty natural. Let's see how they sound together. Oh, now it's a nice pocket between these two layers. If you listen to this in solo, it's only playing when the yellow one is playing. I'm also trying to shape this sound because I want it to be short and tight. I want it to have a good attack, but not a lot of tail. What about pitching it up? Oh yeah, I love these drums. Really sounding amazing. This is like the core of any 90s UK garage or the drum and bass track. So one thing that I like to do when I have a sound that has a really good tone that I like already, but I want to play around a little bit without changing it too much, especially in this case where we have a layer of three different samples. I could try, you know, transposing these one at a time, but instead of doing this, I would like to act directly on the full thing, on the layer. I like to use this plugin, which is by the way, free. This is a company that makes really amazing plugins and guys I'm not paid to say this all of these plugins are like free and I use them all the time it's basically like transposing but without having to follow steps you know without having to follow like minus one minus two or plus one you can just change the frequency and this is gonna alter the sound right you can do anything so in this case I don't want to change it too much but I think I want to go a little bit lower yeah do you hear that resonance? Super clean, a little bit more body. So the last thing that I want to do on the rims is trying to add a little bit of space. I'm thinking of using a reverb, trying to get some sort of like slap effect. And of course, I don't want this to be an insert. I want this to be a send. So I'm going to do this. That's exactly what I was thinking. Just adding a little bit of, you know, stereo width like this. And again, I wanna add a little bit of chorus and I'm gonna go for this one, these free plugins that I really love. And the last thing that I wanna do is try some sort of like distortion, but I think I wanna add the distortion in parallel because I really love the tone of these rims. And if I just put it as an insert, it's gonna destroy the sound. Even if I keep it very low with the dry wet, it's still gonna make a difference to the original sound. Instead, I wanna preserve the original sound and add a layer of distortion and keep it really quiet in the mix in parallel. Let's try this one, which is something that I really like to do these kind of things. It can be kind of aggressive, but if you keep it in parallel, it's like really, really an amazing plug. This is one of my new favorites from Artoria and you know that I'm a fanboy of Artoria but you know, they make great plugins I don't know what to tell you listen to this without it it's a little bit too much of course but and if we listen to this layer in solo listen to this this is like heavily distorted but you know what I mean if you layer something like this which is heavily distorted and you put it in the background keeping the tone of the original sound so just by putting it in parallel it's gonna add a lot of character to your sound without really changing the original source what's called chain here I could rename it dry this is the dry signal and this is the distorted one so when you put them together that's when it starts really getting interesting and by layering all of these things you know the dry signal the reverb the chorus and the distortion that's how we get this really nice sounding rim sound okay so we have these two layers doing the same exact thing i grouped them together and i want to now apply some processing to both in the original song all of the percussions sound a little bit like they're going through some sort of like distortion or like bit crusher they're not really clean and these ones that we have are definitely too clean i recently got this plugin and i think this could be cool for doing exactly what i have in mind because this is called super vhs right making things a little bit dirty a little bit older oh interesting i think i want to use this shape but i definitely gotta dial down the mix yeah yeah so much better with it so there is one big thing that's still missing on the drums, which is a little bit of side chain. You can really notice that every time the kick is playing, all of the percussions are really tamed down in volume. So I'm gonna put a very simple compressor on this group. Yeah. 
Love this. I love this. Mi spegni un po', io muoio di caldo. Spegni un po' se vuoi, ma io ho caldo. Okay, drums are sounding amazing. I'm probably gonna come back to it a little bit later to add a few more things. But now I want to move on to the synths. So in this song, I would say that we have like two synths. Very simple sounds, pads, just filter a lot. And I think I can get a good result by using BA1, which is this new plugin by Baby Audio, which I really love. Really analog sounding. And that's what I'm hearing in the original song, that analog feeling. And I think this plugin does a really good job at this. So I'm gonna scroll through some patches and just playing the chords. Love this. Yeah, you're probably thinking, are you crazy? This is not usable. It is, it is. The reason why it sounds like it's out of tune, it's because of this battery, which is an amazing feature, but that I'm not gonna use this time. This is great for like making lo-fi sounds, lo-fi pads, because you can just decrease the battery and it makes it sound on purpose, like bad. I need no envelope. Yeah. And now I want to go back to the intro because in the intro we can spot a few more sounds. There is probably a second synth, a second layer. I want to go back to this BA1. It's really working well for this song. So I really like this sound, but it's not really evolving. I need to find a way to make it evolve and like open. In the beginning, this evolving synth is really close, like filtered out. But when you get to this final chord right here, it's kind of opening. And then we go back to this first chord and it's closing again. I'm going to start by filtering it out a little bit. And then I want to add some saturation to this, something pretty strong on this, because this is going to be a subtle layer, so we can go hard on this. A little bit extreme on the drive, but I like this. And now we need to make it evolve. So what I'm thinking is we can do that with LFO too. And you can see that these are like four bars, okay? So we can set this to four bars. Whatever we see inside here, this screen, is exactly what's happening in this MIDI clip. Slowly coming out. I don't know if you've ever noticed, but we have a low pass here to cut out all of that distortion coming from the saturation. And I want to add something else to make it even more lo-fi sounding. Let's decrease the motor quality. This is a really great plugin for this. I don't want it to be extreme, but a little bit wobbling. Starts increasing and it comes out for a second. I really love this, love this layer. So now we've been working on the intro and there is one more thing, basically the most noticeable thing in the intro, which is like this plucky little lead sound, which I really, really love. I wanna keep going for this BA1. If you guys haven't tried it, I really suggest that you try it. And as always, you'll find all the plugins that I'm using in this video in the description, so make sure to check it out. So for this one, I really need something plucky and analog sounding. This is kind of cool already. Oh, this is nice. If we can find a way to make it a little bit more plucky sounding, it's gonna be really nice. See what I'm talking about? This is incredible. I feel like the attack is a little bit strong. Insane, insane. And in this case, I want the battery to be like this, even a little bit lower, because I want to hear a little bit of detuning. Oh, but it's actually playing on the higher octave. I noticed just now that it's playing here. Oh, even better. Reduce the sustain to make it really plucky. I also feel the need to add a little bit more detuning lo fi effect to the sound. Look, I mean, the, the first preset is already sounding magical. Listen to this vibe, it's just wow. Drive, no mechanics, a little bit less flutter, a little bit less wow. Stereo with. Oh, listen to this, amazing! This is definitely helping making the sound a little bit darker, a little bit more lo-fi, but it's not really detuning it a lot. I remember using this before to do something like that, so there was a preset right here, something. Detune chorus might be it. There we go. Oh, wow. Listen, without it, and with it. It's gonna... 
you know, wobbling a little bit. Oh, wow. I wish I made that song. If I had this vibe, I would be going insane. So to really bring out the frequencies of the square waves, especially on these synths, one thing that we can do is add in a little filter and really blasting the resonance up. I'll show you. In the intro, this is not happening, but then when we go into the chorus, they're filtered down. So there is one major thing missing. Bass. It's a very simple bass sound. Again, really analog sounding. I'm thinking Diva or maybe a Repro. It's only playing G and F. I think this is a good preset to start from because it has that good envelope. It's kind of opening the filter and then it's closing down. We just needed a little more control than that. So the envelope has to close a little earlier, so I need to reduce this decay a little bit. Perfect. Ooh, that's nice. And I want to add a little bit of saturation to this, so I'm going to go for one of my favorite plugins for saturation, which is this black box. Yeah, listen how it's up in the bass, in that initial part of the note where the envelope is opening. When it does roll. Right? I think there's some frequencies of the bass that are stereo. So there could be a little chorus on the bass, but maybe only on the higher frequencies. This is a good tip for you guys. Never put a chorus on a bass if you don't cut all of the low frequency first. If I put a chorus on the bass like this, this is gonna apply to all of the frequencies of the bass from, you know, 20 hertz to like 20,000. And you absolutely don't wanna do that. You're gonna have the bass stereo. It's really something that I don't recommend you guys do. The quick solution to do that is this. Let's make it so it goes in parallel. This one, we're gonna leave it untouched, but this one, which is the chorus one, we're gonna put a very simple EQ before the chorus. Cut, let's say 120, we can start from something like this. So all of these frequencies, these are not gonna be affected by the chorus because we're gonna cut them, right? And don't worry about it. We're not losing all of that low end because all of that low end is preserved in this layer, the dry signal, okay? So basically what we're doing, once again, like we did in the beginning with the drums, we are summing the dry signal with the wet signal. And in this case, the wet signal is the one with the chorus. Gotta keep it pretty low in the mix though. I want just a little bit of that widening effect. I feel the need to add some more low end to this bass. Something like that. A little bit more subby. We need the sidechain. Of course, in this case, it needs to be a little bit more noticeable. Yeah, I'm really happy with all of these layers. They're sounding great. At this point, I think we can go back to the drums for a second because we need some drums in the intro. We actually have the drums in the intro, but they're filtered. So we're gonna take whatever we did and we're gonna paste it here in the intro. And we're gonna try to filter it out. The best way to do this is actually grouping all of the drums together. Something like that. And we also have a second filter, which is a low pass. Instead of using this high pass filter, we can use tape mellow again, adding also some lo-fi effect to these drums. It's not only high pass and low pass, but it's also a little bit of a drive, a little bit of flutter. Way more than that. Yeah. Because I don't want to hear all of those percussions. Yeah, so much better. I group them together so that I can do this and just turn off the whole thing when the hook starts. Woo! Just a few more tracks missing on the drums, a cymbal, some more hats. I'm going to do this right now real quick. Okay, guys, so the session was a real mess, so I had to like organize it a little bit better. And I also copied the drums, the synths, and the bass, and all of the sections that I wanted to cover. I added a few layers, this little cymbal, really simple, with a little delay. And in verse 2, the pattern of the kick is changing to this. We have one little snap coming in, pretty straightforward, just a really simple snap. A couple more layers of hats doing the exact same thing that the tambourines were doing. And I noticed that here in the verse, it gets a little bit more busy with like percussions and stuff. So I decided to add one more layer of these trashy tambourines, treat it in a way to make them even more trashy sounding. I use this ring modulator. I keep telling you guys, these plugins are free and they're like amazing, amazing value just for zero dollars. Get them. Okay, and then coupled with this frequency shifter that we used before, I showed you. 
And then I wanted to have some more stereo image and decided to add this micro shift. And a quick ear candy, I found this little sample of Scratch, which is in the original. There is one layer that I didn't do and we're gonna do it together real quick, some bells. This is very cool. Yeah. It's pretty much it, but there's one very interesting thing that is happening towards the end of the song. This section that I called post, what's happening is that the kick keeps having this pattern. Ba, 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 ba. The interesting thing is that also the bass and the synths are gated to the kick. Bass and synths are doing... Dum, dum, bum, 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 bum. I think the way they did it, they just bounced the whole thing to audio and they cut it. But I want to show you also a different way of doing this. We're going to do both ways. The first way that I want to show you is using LFO tool. You know, it's one of my favorite plugins. The pattern is repeating. It's always the same. It's one bar. One, two, three, four, two, one. So we can set this to one bar and we can design it. So basically here, it's going to be gated down. And then here again. So now I gotta increase the snap. Snap is basically the grid that I'm seeing here. It's not really visible, but I'm gonna put it to 16 notes. Exactly. Right? Super cool. We can just copy and paste this LFO tool to the bass bus. So cool, this is so cool. But you know, we can just bounce this whole thing to audio and cut it, which would probably give us a slightly better result. The advantage of doing it like this is that if you wanna make it really consistent, you can just take the first chop or like the second, the one that you like better, and we can just copy and paste always the same sample. This makes it a little bit more consistent. Of course, now I can go and just, you know, do the fades correctly so we don't have problems or just put this into a sampler. This would make it even easier to do. So now the track is sounding amazing. We're just missing some vocals from New G's. This is how to produce a UK Garage drum and bass track in 2023. I'm so happy about the result, it's sounding amazing. And of course I could spend a little bit more time polishing the buses, working on the drum bus, compressing the whole thing together. But today I wanted to put more focus into the sounds, the sound selection, which samples, which VSTs we are using to achieve this sound. This is a genre that we have never covered before. And honestly, I think it's sounding amazing. It's so close to the original. And fun fact, all the remake videos that I've done in the past have been demonetized because they sound so close to the original ones that they probably think it's the actual song so i'm getting copyright strikes because of that but you know what F i don't care i really like doing this and show you guys how to get these sounds and in general get better at producing i really hope you guys got something out of it if you have any questions please let me know in the comments and let me know what you think about this genre applied to k-pop i personally really love it so don't forget to drop a like if you enjoyed the video subscribe to the channel if you aren't already and i'll see you in the next one